Antisense Technologies Antisense Technologies are a suite of techniques that, together, form a very powerful weapon for studying gene function, functional genomics, and for discovering new and more specific treatments of diseases in humans, animals, and plants, antisense therapeutics. A conventional definition of antisense refers to, the laboratory manipulation and slash or modification of DNA or RNA, so that its components, nucleotides, form a complementary copy of normal, or sense, messenger RNA, mRNA. The binding, or hybridization, of antisense nucleic acid sequences to a specific mRNA target will, through a number of different mechanisms, interrupt normal cellular processing of the genetic message of a gene. This interruption, sometimes referred to as knockdown or knockout depending upon whether or not the message is either partially or completely eliminated, allows researchers to determine the function of that gene. Antisense Oligonucleotides Oligonucleotide-based antisense techniques represent the most common and, to date, the most successful approach to achieving suppression or elimination of a genetic message. The antisense effect of a synthetic oligonucleotide sequence was first demonstrated in the late 1970s by Zamachnik and Stevenson. Using nucleotide sequences from the 5 and 3 ends of the 35's RNA of Rau sarcoma virus, RSV, Zamachnik and Stevenson identified a repeated sequence of 21 nucleotides, NT, that appeared to be crucial to viral integration. They synthesized a 13 mer oligonucleotide, complement to a portion of this viral sequence. When this synthetic oligonucleotide sequence was introduced into cultured fibroblast cells infected with RSV, viral production was significantly inhibited. They correctly concluded that the oligonucleotide was inhibiting viral integration by hybridizing to the crucial sequences and blocking them. The term they introduced to describe such oligonucleotides was hybridon. At the same time as this work was being done, other groups, notably Tennant ETL and Miller ETL, were reporting similar effects for synthetic oligonucleotides in other systems. These results stimulated a rash of studies focusing on the ability of synthetic oligonucleotides to interfere with genetic processes. Many of these studies failed to achieve the desired effect and it quickly became clear that there were a number of issues that needed to be addressed if synthetic oligonucleotides were to become generally useful reagents for these studies. The most immediately important of these issues was what can be called persistence. Synthetic oligonucleotides are foreign to the cells into which they are introduced and they immediately become prey for endogenous nucleases. If synthetic oligonucleotides were to attain the level of persistence in the cell that would be needed for them to accomplish their tasks, they would have to be protected from those endogenous nucleases. Following Kuruk, there are three possible sites on a nucleotide where protective modifications could be introduced, figure 1. In both DNA and RNA nucleotides the base can be altered or changes can be affected. Figure 1. Possible sites for chemical modification of DNA or RNA nucleotides that will confer protection against the action of endogenous nucleases. Note that the 2O site is only available in RNA. In the phosphate backbone. In RNA nucleotides the 2-hydroxyl group, missing in DNA nucleotides, can also be modified. The trick involved in protective modifications of nucleotides is to introduce an alteration that is protective against nuclease degradation that does not, at the same time, eliminate the desired effect of the oligonucleotide sequence by blocking complementary hybridization or harming the cell. In the late 1960s Eckstein and colleagues successfully introduced what has been termed by a number of authors the first-generation antisense-motivated nucleotide modification. They replaced one of the non-bridging oxygen atoms in the phosphate backbone with a sulfur atom, figure 2a. Called a phosphorothioate, this modification did achieve the goal of nuclease resistance as measured by an increased half-life for a phosphorothioate oligonucleotide of up to 10 hours in human serum compared to about 1 hour for an unmodified oligonucleotide having the same sequence. Moreover, Matsukura and colleagues demonstrated that phosphorothioated oligonucleotides were effective hybridins against HIV replication in cultured cells. 7. On the other hand, phosphorothioated oligonucleotides displayed slightly reduced hybridization kinetics and, 
much more importantly, a tendency toward unspecific binding with certain proteins that resulted in cytotoxicity at high concentrations. Thus, the additional consideration of dose response was added to the mix of issues for antisense agents and the search for other, useful modifications continued. The so called second generation class of modifications directly addressed the nonspecific and cytotoxic issues raised by phosphorothioates by introducing RNA oligonucleotides with alkyl modifications at the two position of the ribose sugar, figure 2b. The two most important of these modifications are 2-O-methyl and 2-O-methoxyethyl RNAs. Antisense oligonucleotides composed of or containing these modifications display nuclease resistance in concert with lower toxicity and slightly increased hybridization affinities. The major drawback of 2-O-alkyl modifications is that antisense agents containing them are not available to the most powerful antisense mechanism RNAsage cleavage. Thus, these agents are only effective through the steric block mechanism. The inability of 2-O-alkyl agents to induce RNAsage age cleavage of RNA has been used to an advantage, however. 2-O-methyl oligonucleotides have been used to increase the expression of desired alternate splices in certain proteins by suppressing the undesired splice variant. This has been shown in vitro to promote expression of wild-type beta-globin over the mutant beta-globin variant in beta-thalassemia. Since RNAsage age cleavage is the most desirable mechanism for antisense effect, and since 2-O-alkyl modifications are desirable for nuclease resistance, a hybrid oligonucleotide construct incorporating both characteristics has appeared in the form of the Gapmer antisense oligonucleotide. A Gapmer contains a central block of deoxynucleotides sufficient to induce RNAsage age cleavage flanked by blocks of 2-O-methyl modified ribonucleotides that protect the internal block from nuclease degradation. These chimeric oligonucleotides have also been promoted as an answer to yet another antisense issue. The phenomenon of irrelevant cleavage occurs because short stretches of nucleotides can bind promiscuously in most genomes. For example, as pointed out by Kuruk. 4, a 15 mer can be viewed as a series of 8 overlapping 8 mers. In a genome the size of the human genome, 3 point multiplied by 9 force 10. If we assume that each of the four bases occurs at random, any sequence of eight nucleotides can potentially bind 49,500 times. 8 force 0.25. By chance alone. While the universe of potential random targets is significantly lower in an mRNA population, the potential for promiscuous binding and subsequent RNAsage age cleavage is still quite high. This theoretical potential became real in the case of a 20 mer phosphorothioate oligonucleotide targeted to the 3 untranslated region, UTR, of the protein kinase C alpha gene, PKC alpha. Due to a strong similarity, this agent also knocked down the protein kinase C zeta, PKC zeta, gene due to the presence of an 11 BP sequence homology between the two genes that matched part of the 20 MER. Shorter targeted central sequences bounded by modified RNA nucleotides that are unable to induce RNAsage age cleavage solve this problem to a large extent. While unmodified oligodeoxynucleotides will routinely form desired DNA DNA and DNA RNA duplexes, synthesis of various modifications that confer enhanced high affinity recognition of DNA and RNA targets has been an ongoing endeavor. A variety of nucleic acid analogues have been developed that display increased thermal stabilities when hybridized to with complementary DNAs or RNAs as compared to unmodified DNA DNA and DNA RNA duplexes. These are the third generation antisense oligonucleotide modifications. Among these analogues are peptide nucleic acids, PNAs. 2 fluoro N3 P5 phosphoramidites. 1. 5 anhydrohexitol nucleic acids, HNAs. And locked nucleic acids. These structures are shown in Figure 2C. A more thorough discussion of third generation modifications can be found in Herduigen. And in Kuruk. The primary antisense issue with many third generation modifications is the desired mix of increased thermal stability in hybridization and enhanced target recognition. One of the earliest constructs to address these was the peptide nucleic acid, PNA. First introduced by Nielsen et al. 
PNAs are dramatic alterations in which the sugar phosphate backbone is replaced completely by polyamide linkages. While these constructs afford increased stability and favorable hybridization kinetics, they suffer from being unavailable to the RNAsH cleavage mechanism, problematic solubility, and delivery difficulties. Nonetheless, PNAs are the most studied constructs for antisense after phosphorothioates and 2O alkyl RNAs, and numerous successes have been reported. The newest and most promising third generation modification is the locked nucleic acid, LNA. Introduced by Koshkin ETL, Obika ETL, and Sing ETAL, an LNA is composed of nucleotides that are locked into a single conformation via a 2O. 4C methylene linkage in 1,2,5,6 DO isopropylene alpha dialofuranose. LNAs were immediately seen to display remarkably increased thermodynamic stability and enhanced nucleic acid recognition. Thanks for interesting.